Welcome to the second video of Unit 2 entitled The Reference List and Introduction to the Embry Referencing Techniques Handbook. In today's video, we will learn what should appear in the reference list. We will practice referencing the most commonly used sources, including books, journal articles and websites, and we'll be introduced to the Embry Referencing Techniques Handbook. You might be unfamiliar with the word source. Sources are the places where you got your information from. There are many different kinds of sources, as you can see, and this list probably doesn't even cover all of them. The point is that the source is wherever you got your information from, and this must be cited on the reference page. Obviously, if you look at this list, some of these sources are more suited for academic assignments than others. We must take this opportunity to caution you against relying too heavily on PowerPoint presentations and handouts from lectures. These are used by lecturers to explain the content of the course, so it is always better to consult the original source or where your lecturer took their information from. In this video, we will learn how to reference books, journal articles, and web pages, as these are the sources students generally use when writing assignments. However, once you know how to use these, you will be able to apply what you have learnt to a variety of other sources. The Embry Referencing Techniques Guide also provides information on how to reference all of these sources, so please consult it if you need help. So what exactly is a reference list? A reference list is similar to a bibliography, which you are possibly familiar with from school. However, a reference list is more precise and only includes the information that you have cited in your assignment. What does this word cited mean? It means you have used a quote or paraphrased ideas from the source. You might not be familiar with the words quote and paraphrase yet, but do not panic. We will deal with both of these in the next video. A reference page differs from a bibliography in that on a bibliography, you might include all of the books or sources you consulted on the topic. In a reference page, however, you will only include the sources that you have cited in the assignment. The reference list provides detailed information about all of the sources you have cited including information such as the author, the title, the date of publication, the place of publication, and the URL, if this is applicable. Basically, it is all the information someone would need to find the source themselves. At Embry, we have a unique style of referencing, which can be found in the Referencing Techniques Handbook. This booklet is essential for essay or assignment writing, and we recommend that you have it next to you when you write an assignment. You'll be able to download the referencing book off the ACL ECI page. If you look at the contents page of the referencing techniques booklet, you will see that the booklet contains a lot of useful information about how to write an assignment. In this video, we are going to focus on section D, which gives us information about how to reference a variety of sources. We'll start with how to reference a book. If you look at section D, you will see books are on page 23. If you turn to page 23 of the Referencing Techniques booklet, this is what you will find under the heading Books. I want to draw your attention to the section at the top, which has a red box around it. This gives us the formula for citing a book. The information we need is the surname and initial of the author, or authors if there's more than one, and this is followed by the year of publication, the title of the book, the edition, place of publication, and finally the publisher. This all sounds a little daunting, so let's try to find this information in a real example. Let's practice with this book. Looking at the cover, there are three bits of information you can find. The first, over here, are the authors of the book. The second piece of information, over there, is the title of the book. 
And the third piece of information that we can find in that box over there is the addition number. Let's look back at the formula for referencing from the Referencing Techniques Guide and add in the information we need. We start with the surname, followed by the initials. So the reference starts with Anderson, followed by a comma, and then the initial, which is W, followed by a full stop. As there are two authors, we now add the second author, whose surname is Lawrence. We put a comma after the surname Lawrence, and then add the initial J, followed by a full stop. The next bit of information we need is the year of publication, which we don't see on the cover, so we'll leave that bit out for the moment. Next is the title of the book, which appears in italics. So we type integrating music into the elementary classroom in italics, and this is followed by a full stop. Next is the edition, which we can see as the ninth edition. This is also followed by a full stop. And finally, we need the place of publication and the publisher, but this information is not on the cover, so let's leave it out for now. This is what our reference looks like at the moment. The information that we are missing appears in orange. So where will we find this information? We need to delve further into the book. If you open to the back of the first page of the book, you will find what is known as the verso side of the title page. This page contains the missing information we're looking for. The year of publication is the most recent date next to the copyright sign. In this example, it is 2014. 2014 to our reference followed by a full stop. Now we need to find the place of publication in the publisher. The place of publication will be the first city you see on this page. In this case, it is Boston. The place of publication, Boston, followed by a colon. The final piece of information we're looking for is the publisher, which is given both at the top of the page and above the place of publication. It is Cengage Learning. We add this to the publisher section and end off with a full stop. Now let's check our full reference against the formula from the Referencing Techniques Handbook. Are they the same? Ensure even small details like punctuation marks are identical. Now it's your turn. On this slide, I've provided you with the book cover and the verso side of the title page. Using the formula of how to reference a book on page 23 of the Referencing Techniques Handbook, try to write this reference on your own. Pause the video now and work on it yourself. When you're finished, unpause the video and check your answer. On the cover, we see that the author is V. Moodley. If we look at the verso side of the title page, we can see the book was published in 2013. The title appears on the cover, Introduction to Language Methodology. Have a look at the cover and the verso side of the title page. If you do not see any information about the edition, we must assume that this is the first edition. In the case of the first edition, we do not need to write this information in the reference. Have a look at the verso side of the title page for the place of publication. The first city mentioned on this page is Cape Town. The publisher's details can be found on both the cover and the verso side of the title page. The publisher is Oxford University Press, Southern Africa. Have a look at the text box in the middle of the presentation. This is what your full reference should look like. Pay special attention to the punctuation. Is your example the same as the one on the presentation? I hope so. Let's move on to referencing journal articles. Most of you are probably unfamiliar with journal articles as you're not expected to use them at school. However, journal articles are a big part of tertiary education. In unit four of ACL, we will deal with reading journal articles in detail. In the meantime, let's learn how to reference journal articles. You will find information about how to reference journal articles on page 28 of the Referencing Techniques Handbook. Like for books, there is a formula at the top of the section. And like with a book, we'll need the details of the author, the year, and the title of the article and journal. 
However, for a journal article, we're also going to need the volume number, the issue number, and the page numbers. Let's look at a real example. Here is the front page of a journal article on the left and the formula for a journal article on the right. The first piece of information we need is the surname and initials. You will notice that there are two authors on this journal. Both of their details need to be listed as the authors of the article. So the reference will begin with Sarai, M, full stop, that's your first author, and Nawa, L, full stop, your second author. Now that we have the authors, we need the year. We find the year, 2014, on the footer of the page. Next, we need the title of the article, which we can see on the top of the page. The title is written in a single inverted comma. Cultural Policy and Arts Management Curriculum in South Africa's Education System, Lessons for Good Governance. The next piece of information is the title of the journal, which needs to appear in italics like the title of the book. The title of this journal is S-A-J-H-E, which is also on the footer. You can add this to your reference in italics. The final piece of information, the volume number, issue number and page numbers, can also be found in the footer. The volume number is 28, followed by the issue number 5, which is in round brackets. The issue number is followed by a colon. Finally, the page numbers 1,643 to page 1,662 are also found in the footer. You can add these to your reference with a full stop at the end. To finish off with, check your reference against the formula at the top. Are they the same? Ensure that details such as punctuation marks are identical. Here's a journal article for you to practice on your own. Pause the video at this point, and when you have finished, check your answer. Okay, well done. Hopefully that wasn't too hard. Let's go through it together. First, we add the author's details. Richard, comma R, full stop. This is followed by the year, which is 2007 and can be found in the footer. The year is also followed by a full stop. Next, we need the title of the article, which is cultivating a culture of thinking in museums and appears in a single inverted comma with a full stop after the inverted comma. Now for the name of the journal, which is also on the footer. This is the Journal of Museum Education, which appears in our reference in italics and is finished off with a full stop. Now we need the volume and issue numbers, which again can be found in the footer. The journal is volume 32, issue 2. So we add 32 with a 2 in round brackets, and we follow this with a colon. Finally, we need the page numbers, which are page 137 to 154, also to be found in the footer. We add this information after the colon and finish off the reference with a full stop. I'm hoping that you got the same answer. The final source we will tackle in this video is referencing a web page. For a web page, turn to page 32 of the Referencing Techniques booklet. Again, you can find the formula at the top of the section. You will notice we need a lot of the same information to reference a web page. For example, the author's surname, initials, year, and the title of the article. Some new pieces of information we also need include the title of the web page, the URL, and the date that you access this web page. Let's look at where to find this information. Here is an example of a website you might like to use in an assignment. You will find the URL of this website on your ECI page, and you're welcome to click on it and visit the full page after this video. I have also provided the formula for referencing a web page so that we can consult it as we work through the example. Like the other sources we have referenced, the first piece of information we'll need are the details of the author. We can see this web page was posted by Stephanie Powell. So we add Powell followed by a comma and the initial S followed by a full stop. The next thing we're looking for is the year, which can be found at the top of this web page. 
If you can't find the year on the web page you're using, scroll down to the bottom of the page and check the footer. Often this information is located there. In this example, the year is 2012. Follow the year with a full stop. Next, we need the title of the article. It is at the top. Come out and play material bingo and games for learning. In our reference, we include this information in a single inverted comma. Next, we look for the name of the website, which in this case is on the right. It is MoMA and is written in italics in our reference. We need to indicate that the source is an online source, and we do this by including the words online in square brackets. Remember to add a full stop after the words online. The next piece of information we add is the URL. I would suggest that you copy and paste it into the reference page. On our reference, we write the words available at and a colon before adding the URL and a full stop at the end. Finally, we include the date we access the web page, which you will see in the bottom right corner. This is included in square brackets in our reference and preceded by the words accessed on. We finally add a full stop at the very end of the reference. Right, here is a website for you to practice referencing. Use the formula from the referencing book to assist you to write the reference and pause the video to try this example. Resume when you're ready to check your answer. How did you manage with that? Let's work through the example together. The author's details are by Ranavant, comma, M, full stop. Next is the year, which is 2016, and also followed by full stop. The article title follows, which is six ways to help students understand math, and in our reference is enclosed in a single inverted comma with a full stop at the end. Next comes the name of the website, which you'll see in the top left corner, Edutopia, in our reference, this is written in italics. Next, we indicate that this is an online source with the words online in square brackets, followed by a full stop. After this comes the words available at and a colon, followed by the URL with a full stop at the end. Finally, we end off with the date that you access this web page which in this case is the 29th of January 2018. We include these details in square brackets with the words accessed on. Make sure you finish off your reference with a full stop. Check your reference against the formula, paying special attention to things like punctuation, which should be identical. So in this video, we've gone through how to reference books, journal articles, and websites, which are probably the most common sources that you will use in your assignments. You will find additional videos on how to reference online journal articles, YouTube videos, newspaper and magazine articles, the CAPS and other government documents, and chapters in an edited book. You can also find information on how to reference many other sources in the Embry Referencing Techniques booklet.